A girl called Chloe loses control of her powers until her father, Sheldon, arrives. He touches down and reminds her that bad guys are people too, and as a hero, they live by a simple code of service, compassion, and mercy. Brandon lives up to his father's legacy and works as a superhero. He possesses the same super hearing his father has, and he heads across town to stop a group of thugs wearing monkey masks. Suddenly, they take off when a blonde woman wearing a pink mask named Paragon appears and decides to rob the place herself. After she knocks out Brandon, Sheldon shows up and saves the day. That evening, Sheldon and his wife Grace cook dinner and discuss how their children are disappointing them. On the other hand, Brandon is on the roof, using his superpowers to listen in on their conversation. While Sheldon continues to discuss with Grace his worry about Brandon's mental state and believes he's not yet ready to take responsibility. Later, Chloe, Shandon's daughter, who's in a rebellious phase, comes rushing back into the house intoxicated. And then, she eventually takes off with their bottle of wine. Brandon then hurries after her and reminds her that they need to become the next utopian. However, Chloe rejects the family, as it becomes clear that these two have had a pretty turbulent and rocky relationship through the years. She tells Brandon to stop trying to impress their dad. Then, Brandon goes to a club to get drinks with another member of the union named Barry. In 1929, Sheldon lived a carefree life, but this changed when he witnessed his father jumping off the roof. It has been 90 years and Sheldon and his brother Walt take a moment to consider their challenges over the past century and what those years have brought about. Although they both adhere to different ideologies, Walt thinks they should do more and get involved in human affairs. In contrast, Sheldon is adamantly opposed to the idea, even though his superhero code appears to be visibly deteriorating. When the group catches wind of Blackstar, a villain currently awaiting trial, breaking out of maximum security, Walt and Sheldon hurry up to fight them all. The old and young members of the Union team up to fight him, but still, it's fruitless. Even when Walt uses his psychic abilities to trap Blackstar in his brain while the others beat his body up, the Union almost loses. Barry and two other young superheroes end up dying in the battle. Unfortunately, Blackstar is too strong, and as he goes nuclear, he holds Sheldon down. All hope looks lost until Brandon suddenly jumps in and smashes his face to bits, killing him, which completely goes against their superhero code. So Sheldon immediately berates his son, even though he has saved his life. After that, everyone reconvenes at the Union of Justice, where they hear a big secret. The creature they killed is not Blackstar because the real Blackstar is still behind bars. Then, inside the prison, the real Blackstar examines the fake one's body. Brandon admits that he's the one who smashed the decoy's face. Blackstar then calls him out for double standards, allowing him to stay alive while he's locked back up. Either way, with the group desperate for answers, the people outside begin to grow restless. A reporter then claims that recent polls suggest that 78% of Americans support the notion of executing villains, which isn't helped by what's happened with Brandon. Eventually, Sheldon confronts Brandon and tells him that he needs to step up and do better. However, Brandon scoffs at the notion, ironically pointing out that Chloe is the wild child, but he's the one he is blaming. Sheldon then reminds him that killing is never the answer as the world's weight hangs over their family's shoulders. In 1920, Sheldon and Walt argued in the wake of their father's death. However, Willie suddenly bursts into the room brandishing a newspaper containing details of how Chester Sampson was ripping off the workers, even ringing with the headline The Death of Capitalism. Sheldon became outraged, but his rant before the workers resulted in a bleeding nose. He needed to retreat for that moment. He stormed back into the office where Walt gravely confirmed their worst fears that Samson was messing with the books. The only way to salvage the company is to lay off the staff for five months. Meanwhile, Sheldon is entirely against this, but unfortunately, he is also the one who has to break the news to the workers. When he told the workers about it, they were understandably angry. In the present, Petra speaks to fits and struggles to control her fear. She is unsure if she can handle the pressure of being a hero so Fitz suggests she hang up her cape instead. Meanwhile, Sheldon tries to patch things up with Chloe, heading to her apartment in California to talk. He asks about her photo shoot, throwing jokes her way which fall on deaf ears. Then, he asks her to show up for her brother at his friend's funeral. 
As they talk, Chloe brings up Sheldon's patriarchal rule over the family and how he fights back and picks fights with them all. Ironically, his desire to be a utopian has caused a significant rift that seems impossible to fix with an easy solution. As the funeral begins, Chloe tellingly fails to show up. Then, Barry's wife, Karen, asks Brandon if his uncle would be willing to erase her children's memory of seeing their father die on television. Brandon says no, and then a cop comes up and thanks him for killing Blackstar and making it easy. In 1929, Walter and Sheldon are preparing for their father's funeral when Sheldon goes to a newsroom to confront young Grace, a sassy reporter with a flapper bob. Later, he accuses her of lying about him and his father in the press. He then calls Grace and her fellow reporters rotten little Marxists and reminds them that capitalism made the building. His father built those things, and those reporters are lurking behind their ink and ruining good men like him. Suddenly, his nose starts bleeding. He has a prophetic dream with particular instructions to find the boat, gather his crew, sail to the island, and save America. Later, he returns to the present when Brandon steps up to the podium and starts talking about the three heroes who died, Briggs, Vera, and Barry. After that, Brandon conveys his sadness to everyone and offers his apologies for the fact that he was unable to do more in any way. The funeral is drawn to a close, and it is evident that tensions are increasing among the guests. As a result, their attitude is shifting. They state that they want to see justice done, and even the cop who is present adds that he feels all the criminals responsible for the incident should be lined up and shot in the head. Meanwhile, people start spreading rumors that an attack on the U.S. is coming soon. The word then spreads fear like a virus and makes it easier for those who want to attack to take advantage of the situation and carry it out. After some time has passed, an arrogant criminal named Hutch, who also knows how to teleport, attempts to steal a quantum processor. But when Sheldon arrives to stop the robbers, his plan goes out of control, and everything goes wrong. As a result of the failed robbery, Hutch's boss, who goes by the inventive name Big Man, requires him for an explanation. A few moments later, Big Man is having a hard time containing his wrath, which causes the situation to get uneasier. After that, he instructs Hutch to pursue the Kulikov brothers to take the briefcase that they have. So, Hutch informs Gabby and Jacinda, members of his heist crew, who are not exactly excited about participating in this mission, as it is risky. Later that night, Sheldon gets behind the wheel of a car while the Kulikov brothers continue their pursuit. Even though it seems they are in no danger and are free to proceed, the automobile comes to a complete halt due to Chloe walking out in front of them and causing a jolt in the road. After discovering that Chloe is the daughter of a utopian, the others immediately begin attacking her with various powers. However, it is unsuccessful, and as a result, they eventually run away from the scene. After that, the luggage explodes open, revealing some peculiar blue equipment which Chloe grabs and then puts on before running away. Then, Hutch uses his teleportation device to kill the big man and Lucy, which changes the rules of the game that everyone is playing. In 1929, Jane and Walt's worries about Sheldon grew increasingly significant. Because Sheldon's hallucinations are causing him to behave oddly, Leonard and Penny have called George to ask him to come to their house and help them. When George arrived to save them, he found Sheldon behaving unpredictably. He also found Sheldon hearing Chester's mocking voice and seeing Chester's bloodied visage in the periphery of his vision. George appears to be worried about the schematics, sketches, and diagrams. The situation is even more uncomfortable for him when Sheldon walks over to him and hugs him. When George finally leaves exhaustion, he takes the designs with him. After that, he travels to the restaurant to piece together the different components he seems to recognize. Sometime later, he returns to visit Sheldon and realizes he didn't make up the schematics he's been creating because they appear to have some connection to windmills. When he goes to see Walt, he has no intention of accepting that this is anything other than the ravens of a deranged individual. On the other hand, Jane overhears their conversation and agrees with Walt. Going back to the present, Hutch has returned to base and is currently working on the quantum processor. The next day, Chloe is at a party, trying to have a nice night, when a man named Nick shames her on the dance floor for not being a hero like her parents. Then, with Nick at her side, she makes her way up to the rooftop where the other heroes are celebrating. Still, 
Nobody there seems particularly excited to see her there, and shames her for showing her ass on a magazine cover instead of helping them fight bad guys. She then doesn't waste any time and confronts Sierra. Still, all hell breaks loose when she does, forcing Nick to intervene. He stops everything as people start throwing about their powers to prevent a full-scale uprising. After that, he brings Chloe back to his house, where they spend the night together. The following day, Chloe sleeps in and gets a late start, which results in her modeling agency calling her and insisting that she show up for her picture shoot. When Nick begs Chloe to make a favorable impression on her father for him, it is clear that he is not acting in good faith. It ended up being a deception on his part to elevate his status as a hero by drawing more attention to himself. Chloe exacts her vengeance on the man by punching him through the wall and onto the ground below. After that, she shows up late and hung over to a photo shoot, but her publicist demands that she do a nostalgic hero pose for corporate. Her publicist also says that if she can't be a real superhero, she can at least pretend for five minutes and throws in a jab about her cocaine use. In response, Chloe does the hero shot and lifts the car she's supposed to sell over her head, but only so she can throw it across the studio. After leaving the shoot, the agency predictably drops her, and that's the call she's fielding when she walks right into the van and Hutch's crew, who hit her. This time, though, Chloe heads back to her apartment with the briefcase. Slowly realizing her life has become a mess, she struggles to hold back tears. Instead, she decides to block everything out with more drugs or, precisely, the blue bag of gear from the suitcase. In 1929, Sheldon wandered down a road looking for directions. After helping a man with a flat tire, he continues to acquaint town. There, he sees Chester continue taunting him, encouraging Sheldon to call home and admit defeat. Instead, Sheldon tries to act righteously and jumps into a fight brewing outside. As a result, he receives a punch to the jaw for his troubles. A young girl arrives when he regains consciousness, with blood dribbling from his nose. She then checks his sketch and points Sheldon toward the old Miller farm. There, he sees a windmill missing three blades, which is a link to whatever the heck's going on. Later, Sheldon heads to the house and sees a strange sailor boy on the porch, flashing in and out of visions. As the man entered the house, a farmer confronted him with a revolver and said he had been waiting for him there. When they sat down to discuss, it became clear that this farmer saw the same visions as the others. The farmer is telling his narrative and claims that he discovered a site where a river flows into the sea. Then, everything is quite mysterious, but it points in the island's direction. The farmer is explaining something when he suddenly stops talking and sees Sheldon peeping over his shoulder. He then inquires if it is anybody in the neighborhood and if it is not always someone nearby. After getting a knowing look from the farmer, the man eventually turned the gun around and fired it at himself. Soon after, Sheldon went to the basement and found diagrams, numbers, and other clues to the mystery, which made the idea that he should go to the island even more likely. Then, he sees Walt waiting outside the house when he leaves. As the echoes of these numbers repeat in a low tone, Sheldon assures him that he is all set to go home. Currently, Chloe takes Hutch's drugs home and has invited all her heroic friends who like to party to her apartment. However, the landlord appears and insists that she vacates the premises until they threaten him with their powers. After repairing the hole in the wall, he orders everyone to be quiet before walking away. Then, her childhood friend, Jana, the only person who has been genuinely nice to her, stays behind. However, her efforts are fruitless because Chloe keeps pushing everyone away. She has trouble accepting that Jana cares about her. Those suspicions are proven correct when Jana whispers that she is better than this, then leaves. As she keeps sniffing this blue clothing, a trickle of blood drips from her nose. Chloe then loses consciousness, falls to the ground, and begins choking and sputtering. At the same time, Hutch teleports inside the apartment and looks down at her. Later, the country starts to turn against Sheldon's code, and the issues at home profoundly affect his psyche. So he attends therapy, discussing his father's betrayal and what's driven his profound, almost authoritarian, way of instilling righteousness upon others. After that, he sends Brandon off to check on Blackstar's clone. Once they're through, Brandon gets talking to Walt and asks him what he would have done in the heat of the moment. Walt tellingly sidesteps the question, eventually interrupted by the arrival of Barnabas Wolf. This eccentric magician joins them all in the autopsy room, where Barnabas shows what he can do. 
He removes the layers of armor around this doppelganger as the group finds a strange orb inside this thing's body. Barnabas then uses his powers and realizes there's something inside the orb, and that something is Chester's watch. Heading back to see Sheldon, they know it is a replica and copy of Sheldon's, and they are all shocked at how it possibly happened. They then both realize that there's only one man capable of engineering such a thing, and that man is George. With Sky Fox missing in action for a long time, no one seems to know where he is. Meanwhile, Chloe wakes up in the hospital recovering from her overdose, with Hutch sitting and waiting for her. Then they have a conversation about the truth. Sheldon appears too, confronting Hutch and getting any information about George's whereabouts. According to Hutch, he hasn't seen his father since he was a kid. Then George turns on all the other heroes, at least according to Sheldon, but Hutch sees things in a very different light. Sheldon asks Hutch for help and eventually sees the pair teleport inside a strip club when Hutch asks his contraption to take him to see George. Unfortunately, this is the same result every time he tries. Jumping to Hutch and Chloe, who are having sex, Hutch admits afterward that he told Chloe's father the truth. On the other hand, Grace arrives to check up on Brandon, but immediately sees Barnabas's powers in action. For now, Barnabas is staying, having concocted a plan with Walt to allow him into his mind. In 1929, Sheldon was back home, but still saw Chester's bloodied corpse sitting at the table with him. Eventually, he had enough and returned to see his father's body, taking his watch before leaving. With the watch in hand, Sheldon visited George at his estate. He mentioned the strange whispers and how something was calling out to him. Right now, though, he needs help to piece together quite what this all means. Pointing out the coordinates, he believes there's something there that could change the world. On the back of this, George eventually agrees to join him in this expedition. Walt and George then continue on their rounds, recruiting a group of Grace and Fitz. However, this puts Walt in a difficult position. Then, the board voted to kick Walt and Sheldon out of the company and the books could not be dire. Then, Sheldon and George get into a fight and George thinks that Sheldon's trip could be a cleansing experience. He thinks this is a way for Sheldon to heal, accept what happened, and get some much-needed closure. Speaking of which, Jane drops off her engagement ring when she finds out about this and walks away. Back in the present, Sheldon was talking to a therapist named Jack Hobbs. Hobbs, and he happens to be a criminal genius that Sheldon himself locked up in Supermax. Then, the intriguing lines between good and evil continue to blur. After that, Sheldon races off to save the day after an intimate afternoon with Grace. After he leaves her behind, she starts sifting through archival photos, pausing on a shot of Sheldon holding their two kids and the doc the group vacated for this expedition. Later, after learning that Chloe's in the hospital, Grace visits her by floating outside her bedroom window. Chloe then assumes that her mom will remind her that her actions reflect the family or pull some of Sheldon's shits, so she cuts her off. Back in 1932, Sheldon and the group managed to pay off a captain to see them safely across the waters to the island. However, numerous stories are floating around about ships going missing in the exact spot they're heading. With whispers of sea creatures and supernatural occurrences everywhere, the group confounds when they see the state of the ship they're sailing in. Later, the group reluctantly set sail with a skeleton crew and a no-gun policy. Out at sea, Grace starts to exhibit concerns, especially when she notices Sheldon talking to himself. This continues throughout the voyage, with Grace and Fitz taking Walt aside and speaking to him about Sheldon. Just as they do, the engines suddenly stop. While the group works on trying to fix it to get the ship moving, Grace heads into Sheldon's study. There, she finds sketches Sheldon has drawn of Chester with his bloodied face. Chester's watch is there too, which Walt notices and immediately questions his brother. Both are interrupted by the sound of alarms wailing on the ship because they find a man out at sea called Richard Conrad. According to Sheldon, this is the last piece of the puzzle, and the others welcome him aboard. Eventually, everything bubbles up and reveals the truth. Sheldon sobs and holds Walt, admitting that he's been here in Chester this whole time. Currently, Brandon has started dating his ex, Ruby, again. On the other hand, his conversation with Grace is brief as she does the rounds and keeps the other heroes in check. She also stops to see Sierra and Jay, who looks close to killing a supervillain, making the Utopian's code start to whine. Then Grace sees the disillusioned look in the kid's eyes as she talks to them. 
While passing, she also learns that Chloe is in the hospital. Flying over to her apartment, Grace warns her daughter to be careful, given Hutch is the son of Sky Fox. However, she doesn't care and eventually encourages her mother to leave. She finally heads back to the battlefield where she finds Ghost Bean bleeding out and dying at the hands of a villain called Dario. As the girl fades, she promises Grace that she didn't break the code. Furious and struggling to control her rage, Grace eventually pummels Baryon into a bloodied mess but tellingly keeps her alive. Now even she is starting to doubt Utopian's code. Afterward, the Elder members gather together at the Union, determining that the only way to find answers is for Walter to go into the brain of Blackstar's dead clone. However, Grace believes Walter should invite contract killer Reiku into the crew especially as she happens to be his daughter and a psychic assassin in Tokyo for backup. Reiku happens to be Walt's daughter, and there's no love lost between them and forced to cough up a fee of one million a day plus expenses to draft her in to help. However, Sheldon isn't happy with Grace's decision. As they talk about the code, Grace tells him it's broken, and the young generation is becoming increasingly disillusioned. She wants Sheldon to speak to them and remember what happened on the island for them to gain their powers. Meanwhile, Chloe and Brandon get talking, with them both mourning the loss of Ghost Bean. When she leaves, Petra shows up and talks to Brandon, telling him she doesn't believe in the code and wants to quit the union. However, Brandon ironically speaks the same mantra his father did to him, seemingly convincing her otherwise. Back at the union, Rayku and Walt both use their powers together. Walter, for his part, visits the real Blackstar in jail. On the other hand, Blackstar reads a romance novel is cool and denies contact with Sky Fox. He then repeatedly threatens him using his psychic ability to choke him, saying he is not his brother and growls his way out. In 1932, Sheldon prepared for the trip to the island. Richard's arrival on board sparks their interest from Sheldon, who convinces him to tag along. According to the captain, the group has three days to figure out what's happening, and if they miss the cutoff point, they will be left there. Anyway, the group pressed on and found trees with carvings on them matching the diagrams that Sheldon had been drawing. With a desert stretching on before them, Walt starts to exhibit doubts. The pair fall out, eventually coming to blows with George, stepping in and stirring things up further. The group continues to run into issues when the island springs up several obstacles for them to tackle. As they cross a chasm, Walt and Sheldon discuss the company and issues that have occurred to them until now. There's a dangerous moment where Walt nearly falls, but he survives, and there's not any tension. The group eventually presses on but comes to a dead end. As the ground beneath them starts shaking, the walls rise leading to infighting within the group. Light suddenly shines down from above, prompting Grace to stop them all. She realizes that the island is making them fight with each other as she looks over the skeletal remains of six warriors on the floor. The group touches the wall together, with Walt, Sheldon, and George putting their issues aside for the time being. They feel the wall simultaneously revealing a brilliant, shining light as they do just that. The group heads inside and appears on a strange alien planet. An ethereal form then takes shape as Chester and the other parental figures for the heroes, who all confirm that they've passed the tests and are worthy. A brilliant blast of light then spreads across the island as the six original heroes touch down. Later, Walt and Sheldon discuss their newfound powers after the island incident. Now that they're back in mainland America, they want to make a difference. Sheldon implores Walt to try and work with George and at least try to see eye to eye. Sheldon tells them they should use their powers to help the country get back on its feet instead of killing people or getting involved in government. In the present, the heroes all gather to enter the Black Star clone's mind, but something goes wrong when Walter enters. Reiku tries to stabilize the situation using her mysterious mind powers, but he might get trapped in the clone's brain. As they talk, Brandon admits that he spoke the exact words he did, echoing that the code does help keep people together. However, they're both interrupted by Petra racing in with bad news. Someone has freed Blackstar, the real one, from his cell, and he's on the rampage. Brandon and Sheldon both team up, heading to the cell and intent on finding the dangerous foe. Walter is still inside the fake Blackstar's mind, and the honeymoon period between Chloe and Hutch ends. 
but the lover's quarrel doesn't last long when Hutch's crew abandons him because they don't want Chloe to snitch on them. Later, Hutch shows Chloe his secret lair and reveals that he's trying to use the power rod to create a weapon and find his father. Sheldon eventually finds Blackstar, who holds Brandon around the neck and challenges Sheldon's code. If he kills Blackstar, then his code is broken. If Brandon dies, then the new generation will turn away from him. Eventually, Petra shows up to help, with the three heroes thwarting Blackstar's threat and avoiding any killing, despite Sheldon's eyes turning a brilliant shade of blue. In the meantime, Walt has a face-to-face -face encounter with Sky Fox, who appears to be waiting for him within the clone's head. After a while, they got into a fist fight and Sky Fox hit Walt with a vicious right punch in the mouth. He cannot defeat George until Grace arrives to lend a hand. During their conversation, George laments to Walt that the Union has turned against him because of what Walt did. Walt responds by discussing the ideologies of good and evil. Going back to the present time, Hutch has left Chloe after telling her he will meet his gang. He even talks about Chloe as if she were Utopian's daughter sometimes. But Hutch stands his ground and admits that she has her secrets to conceal, including that she would not invite him over to meet their parents. In the end, the notion that someone is the son of the world's most powerful criminal and the daughter of the world's most powerful superhero does have a certain air of lyrical allure. At this point, opposites attract one another, but neither party is willing to recognize that fact. Hutch's gang is upset that he slept with Chloe. As a result, they eventually run away, allowing Hutch to carry out his master plan himself. Hutch travels to China, but he is taken by surprise and outwitted by the security personnel there. Chloe teleports into a room devoid of oxygen. Therefore, she must rush in at the last second and offer assistance. She rescues Hutch just in the nick of time. It turns out that Hutch is seeking a power cell, which has the power to rip through the most vital being on the planet. Hutch is looking for the power cell. Despite this, he does not intend to use it to harm Sheldon in any way. In all seriousness, he is intent on looking for Jorg. Later, the two are in the basement of Hutch's house, getting ready to operate a machine. Walt and Grace bring back a message from their time in Blackstar's clone. A dreadful vision sees Sky Fox standing over a wounded Sheldon and Brandon and looking down on them. Walt claims that George is the one who cloned Blackstar, well aware that this villain would be a problem for the Union. When Walt returns to his house, he discusses the Blackstar job with Ray Q. Ray Cow sees right through his apology that he hasn't been around as much because he sees right through his facade. And with that, the reality is exposed. Walt was the one who was responsible for everything that took place, as he was intent on seizing control of the country for himself and usurping Sheldon's position as the leader. He is dissatisfied with the course the government has taken and thinks he ought to be running things instead. Walt uses his powers to resist the threat posed by Reiku's attempt to make a deal, ultimately resulting in the death of his daughter before anyone else acquires her. Back to Reiku, who now has her throat slit as he places a comforting hand on Sheldon's shoulder and offers words of support. 